Hello guys. So this session, I wish to take up the tumors of the bone. And the importance of this session can never be underestimated. You can very well make out that any damn exam you appear in, at least you will find one question from the area of the bone tumors. So if with at least one session, you can seal a question to your pocket or maybe more, there's no harm in paying attention to it. So let me quickly start with the tumors of the bone. But before that, just let me share an interesting thing with you. This gentleman, any king, he is called the father of orthopedic oncology. And why I am telling you this particular thing before I am starting? Because this is one of that person whom I really hate. Years back, when I had given my All India exam, at my time it was for the All India exam, this question was there. Who is called the father of orthopedic oncology? And this ugly person snatched away a few ranks from me because I was not knowing his name. I don't want that to happen to you. By chance, this question gets repeated. So I'm telling you guys that the father of orthopedic oncology is this gentleman, any king. Actually, I was an inquisitive fellow. So when I made this mistake, I went back home to check what was his contribution. So that's where I got to know that this gentleman, he had basically given a system of classification for bone tumors against his name. So that for this reason, he was being called as the father of orthopedic oncology. Now, while checking this up, I got to know that even WHO has given a classification system of bone tumors. So that very day, I decided that if ever I will be teaching the bone tumors, I will be using the WHO system. I am not going to use his system because I hate this man. But yes, you never know when these questions get repeated. So at least you should be knowing that the father of orthopedic oncology is this gentleman, Annie King, because he has given a classification system for the tumors of the bone. So as I'm going to take you through the tumors of the bone, some important take home messages for you to carry before we start with the discussion. I will be asking you in every tumor, what is the age? You will always say young age. 10 to 20 years is a fairly safe age group that you can bank upon. Tumors are related to growth. At this particular age, you have that puberty, rapid growth. So maximum tumors, will be centered around this particular age group. Now, I will be asking you that this tumor will be seen in which part of the bone. Now, the part of the bone that harnesses the growth plate is simply the metaphysis. So, you will see that maximum tumors will again be centered around the metaphysis. Just a couple of tumors will be there in the epiphyseal or the diaphyseal areas. So, that will make you memorize in a separate way. So these are epiphyseal or metaphyseal tumors. Otherwise, maximum tumors, metaphysis. Now, regarding the lesion that can be produced by these tumors. Now, either the tumors produce a lytic lesion, which means a blackish, blackish lesion on the x-ray. Or the tumors produce a blastic lesion. Blastic means whitish, sclerotic lesion on the x-ray. See, tumors in a bone can come from either of the two sources. Bone has cartilage forming cells. So cartilage cells can give rise to tumors. And cartilage is there in the growth plate. Now the tumors coming from cartilage cells will be forming cartilage and that is not visible on the x-ray. So obviously these lesions are going to be lytic. But bone also has bone forming cells osteoblasts. So the tumors that will be coming from these osteoblasts will be forming bone and bone is nicely visible on the x-ray. So they are going to give you the blastic picture. So in a simple way, cartilage tumors will be predominantly lytic and bone forming tumors will be blastic. And yes, this cartilage, when it remains in the body for a little too long, this also becomes white. Because when a cartilage remains in the body for a little too long, this is what happens in the cartilage calcification. So when the cartilage tumors stay a little too long, even the cartilage gets calcified, appearing whitish on the x-ray. And mind you, I've given you the golden message. I've given you the golden message that I would be talking about 
calcification in case of cartilaginous tumors. Perfect enough with that. So let me now begin the discussion by taking you through this much awaited WHO classification. Now going by the WHO classification, tumors are first categorized into either tumor like lesions or the two tumors of the bone. Now what I mean by this word like here. So these are lesions that grow but they don't spread. Spread. Spread means no metastasis. See the problem with the tumor that it grows but then it goes to other areas also like a tumor of bone can go to liver, kidney, lung, brain, some other area. But here these lesions just remain at their own place. At their own place they grow. So you can't call them as real tumor but you can call them as like tumor like lesions. So here first I will be speaking of a lesion called fibrous dysplasia. Okay. Then I will be speaking of a lesion called a bone cyst. And then I will be speaking of a lesion called osteochondroma or as some people also call it exostosis. So once I would have gone through these three things then I will be going to true tumors of the bone. But yes, before I tell you about the true tumors, I just like to raise this small important issue here that this particular lesion osteochondroma is little sandwiched between the two. Some people say that this is a true tumor and some people say no, this is a tumor-like lesion. So there's little controversy regarding it. I will tell you what is osteochondroma and trust me, you will be equally confused. But my, my recommendation, keep it into tumor-like lesions. Fine. So once we would have discussed these three, then I will go ahead and then I will discuss these true tumors of the bone. So the true tumors that I am going to discuss. Now tumors in bone can basically come from either of these three sources or either of these three cells. cells. See, what is a tumor? Where a cell keeps on growing, keeps on growing, keeps on growing. That's what a tumor is. So if you know the types of cells that you know structure has, you can know the types of tumor. Simple. Now bone basically has three types of cells. Bone has cartilage, growth plate. So in the growth plate, you have these cartilage forming cells, chondroblasts. Then bone has its own bone forming cells, osteoblasts. And please don't forget that in the bone you also have the bone eating cells, osteoclasts. So these are the three category of cells that you have in the bone. Now the nomenclature has been kept like very simple. The benign tumor that will be arising from the chondroblasts will simply be called as a chondroblast. Soma, while the malignant tumor that will be coming from these chondroblasts will simply be called as a chondrosarcoma. Clear? In a sim similar way, much similar way, the benign tumor that is going to be coming from osteoblasts will be called as an osteoblastoma but the malignant tumor that will be coming from the osteoblasts would simply be called as an osteosarcoma. Clear? Now the tumor that arises from osteoclasts uh, should I call it benign? No, it's not benign because it grows. But can I call it malignant? No. Because it does not go to other places. It grows at its place. At its place it grows, 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 grows and grows and becomes a bubble of soap. Soap, bubble, appearance. 
जॉइंट सेल ट्यूमर जीसीटी जॉइंट सेल ट्यूमर आई कैन एक्चुअली कॉल दिस ट्यूमर एज बींग लोकली एग्रेसिव दैट ग्रोज अलॉट एट इट्स ओन प्लेस बट डज नॉट गो टू अदर साइड so these are the tumors i am going to discuss and yes this is a small variant of chondroblastoma that's called enchondroma so we can discuss these things together i'll tell you this is enchondroma and when this becomes this enchondroma becomes chondroblastoma and and then there is a small variant of this tumor also osteoblastoma that is called osteoid osteoma so same tumors nearly same tumors variants of each other so we can discuss them together and then i just forgot bone also has marrow and marrow is one of that area where you find maximum growth in the body so only malignant tumors come from marrow and yes a very very important malignant tumor that comes from the marrow ewing sarcoma so this is a malignant tumor coming from the marrow so i will also eventually have a word with you regarding this very important tumor ewing sarcoma so these are the tumors that we are going to discuss so if you've jotted down the list i think very quickly we can now move ahead and start individually the discussion of each of these tumors but as i told you first i will be discussing these tumor like lesions and then i will go ahead and individually take up each of these two tumors 